tab. Please now, I need to use it. Okay, just give me some time then I'll give you my tab. Please now, I need to submit an assignment. As you can see, I'm busy. What is it now? Please. I'm begging you. Please. Fine, but the only reason why I'm giving is because you're persistent and I want peace. Thank you. Okay, did I hear the word persistence there? Yes. Oh, that's a good one. And you know what? That's the topic that we're going to be treating today. But before we go into that, we'd like to say a word of prayer. Can we pray, Precious and Daniel? Okay. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you. thank you for the privilege you've given to, to us to come together before you. As we go into the service, let your presence be with us. Shed your light in our hearts and give us understanding of your word. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, before we go into our topic for today, we would like to go and join the praise and worship. The Bible says, enter his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. We'll see you shortly after the praise and worship. Hallelujah! You're welcome to church this morning as we worship together in the presence of the Lord with a joyful heart.
Welcome back, friends. Um, like I said earlier, we're going to be talking about persistence in service today. My name is Adenike, and I have here with me... Precious Agu Jonathan, Oladengi Daniel. Okay, so today we want to know what it means to be persistent. So, Precious and Daniel, can you tell me, what do you understand by being persistent? Persistence basically means never giving up on something, and continually asking or insisting on doing something so that you get what you want. Okay, thanks Daniel. How about you, Precious? Persistence means like it never giving up. It basic, basically means never giving up. Even when fear or someone or something is telling you that you should not do it, that you cannot do it. And persistence means never giving up. Yeah, you are right. So when you're talking about being persistent, it means that you don't give up. Even in the midst of, in the face of challenges, no matter the challenges that you meet on the way, when you want to achieve a goal, you need to be persistent. No matter the people that are telling you that you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you need to be persistent. If you remember the short playlist that we had at the beginning, Precious was using a tab to read a Bible. Daniel wanted to use the tab for an assignment. And Precious couldn't have, wouldn't have given it to, to, to him if he wasn't persistent. Could have just said, oh, she's using it, let me go away. But, you know, he was persistent. He kept begging and begging and begging until he was able to get what he wanted. And there are so many other examples in the Bible. If you remember the widow, the persistent widow, in the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Do we want to read that? Luke 18, 1 to 8. Then Jesus told those that always followed him a picture story. He told them that they must not get tired, but they must go on praying. Here, thank you for that passage. So you can see what that widow did. The widow was very persistent, and he would not, she would not allow the judge to rest. And they just said, I don't want this woman to wear me out. I am going to answer her just because of that. We saw what happened at the beginning also. We also have blind Bartimaeus, you know. He was crying out to Jesus, Jesus, son of mercy, have mercy, son of David, have mercy on me. But they were trying to silence him. But he kept on and on and on and he wouldn't listen until Jesus gave him attention. You know, there are so many ways. That was persistent in prayer. We have persistent in prayer. We also remember the story of Elijah. When he asked the servant, they were praying for rain. He asked the servant to go and look at the cloud, go and watch for that rain. Do you know how many times the servant went? Seven times. He went the first time. He came by, I saw nothing. Second time, I saw nothing. Third time, I saw nothing. Elijah told him to keep going back until the seventh time when he saw the sign of rain. And that was when he knew that, yes, the rain was coming. They could have given up in the middle. They could have given up maybe after the first, second, third, and the fourth trial. So for us, what does it mean for us? What does it mean for us to be persistent? And in which ways can we be persistent? At the beginning of the year, we set goals for ourselves. Haven't we? Didn't we? Yeah. We set goals for ourselves. So do we want to talk about examples of when we had, you know, been persistent? Maybe in any area of our lives, you know? Maybe pressures you want to go. In which way have you demonstrated persistence? Okay, in school, um, we, we had a year of our competition. So on the year of our competition, some of my cl I am I am an Igbo girl, so some of my classmates were saying that I cannot speak Yoruba. So they were pulling me down but still I was still I was still doing the Yoruba act. So until that day of the Yoruba act, I practiced before the day we did and I did it well. That was persistence. She said she's Igbo and she had to act in Yoruba. But because of her persistence, even when people started telling her that um, she couldn't do it, she did it. And another thing she didn't mention, they said she did it very well. That was persistence. You know, we have instances when people will tell us that, oh, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. You know, you don't listen to them. And you have instances when you yourself, you are discouraged because you kept meeting roadblocks on the way. And you know one thing, when we have a goal, or a vision, or a dream, there is always a challenge along the way. 
There is no goal that you set for yourself. There is no vision, no big dreams that you have. There will always be obstacles. There will always be challenges. But if we are going to achieve that goal, if we are going to fulfill that vision, we are going to learn not to give up. Daniel, do you want to share your own example with us of when you have demonstrated persistence? I set goals to read the Bible throughout the year, the whole Bible for a year. And I began, I began reading the Bible. And I went to school in my spare time and read the Bible. When my friends found out that I was planning to read the Bible from the beginning to end, they started telling me, no, you can't do this, you are wasting your time, you will never be able to finish it. But because of persistence, I was very persistent and I was able to finish it. Now something, I have also had my own experience, you know, trying to solve a problem. I tried and tried and tried and tried, there was no one to explain to me. I tried all sorts of, you know, different approaches. That was a, a, a calculation, you know, and I wasn't able to do it. Eventually, I did the exam. I still wasn't able to do it, but I, luckily, the question did not come out in the examination. But I didn't give up. I was like, I want to know how they solved this problem. And you know what? Even after the exam, I was still able to get it because I persisted and I was able to get it. And you know today, I am teaching other people that particular calculation. I'm teaching other people how to solve that calculation. So, you know, if we must achieve results, we must learn to be persistent. Okay, so we are going to be talking about labor now. We'll go into the book of Genesis chapter 30 and the precious is going to read for us. But before we read, I would like to give an introduction, you know. Jacob was in the house of Laban. He was so in love with the younger daughter of Laban, and that was Rachel. And he agreed with Laban to serve him for seven good years before marrying Rachel. Now, on the date of the wedding, you know, supposedly he married Rachel. And uh, after being with the wife, you know, the first night, in the following morning, he woke up and he saw that, wow, this is not my wife. You know, this is Leah, not Rachel. And he was like, what did you do to me? But Laban said, I am sorry. In our culture, we don't give out the younger one before the elder one. And Jacob was like, oh, wow, this is what I want. This is who I want. And he decided to work for another seven good years, making 14 years in order to marry Rachel. You know, that was persistence. He could have given up. He could have settled for Leah. But he did not settle for Leah. He decided to go for what he wanted. And after serving for 14 years, he got what he wanted. But he didn't end there. We are going to read the Bible because along the line, Laban, you know, he cheated Jacob on several occasions. And at the point that Jacob was wondering, what is my portion? What do I have for all the service, you know, that I have rendered? You know, he didn't give up. Um, precious, let's go to um, Genesis 30 from verses 29. Let's read. And he said unto him, Don't knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou had be before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now, when shall I provide for my own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything, if thou wilt do this thing for me. I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown among the sheep, and the speckled and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire before thy face everyone that is not speckled and sparkled among the goats and brown among the sheep that shall be 
counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he the he got that were ring stamp and spotted and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had some white in it and all the brown among the sheep and gave them into the hands of his son. Let's pause there. So we can see from there, you know, after Jacob went to Laban to say, what is my portion in this place for all the services that I have rendered to you? And um, they had an agreement. And um, they agreed that all the goats, the sheep, the lamb that had spots, you know, all the ones that were speckled, spotted, would be for Joseph, for Jacob, you know. And anyone that didn't have any speckle or spot or anything, it, they would be considered as stolen. And do you know what? After they reached that agreement, Laban now went to pack all the lambs, all the animals that had um, spots, speckles and all. He packed everything and kept with his son so that Jacob would not be able to have any. That was cheating. But you know what? Jacob persisted in, persisted in service and at the end of the day, God revealed to him how he was going to outsmart Laban. And that was how he became so rich. He now ended up having so many cattle, sheep, you know, lamb, and so on and so forth. You know, persistence pays. Now, for us here, you know, what do we have to learn about persistence? Um, precious, Daniel, what are the ways in which we, you know, can be persistent? Mm, we can be persistent by reading our Bible every day and ensuring that For example, I was in school and my school wanted to pick a new forwarder for our football team. So I, I enrolled for that position, but my friends were telling me that I can't do it because of my height, my speed. But I was persistent in training. I trained a lot and I was able to get the position. You know, that, 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 that is a good one, you know, because in life, we will always hear people that will tell us, we can't do it, you can't do it, you, you are this, you are that, you are short, you are this, you are that. You know, we shouldn't listen. We must be focused on that goal that um, we have ahead of us. And what about you, Precious? Okay, so like, if you go for a class and other of your, um, your classmates don't come, and you are the only one that keeps on coming, don't think that, the thing, don't like, don't give up. Just continue coming. Don't mind people who aren't coming, and never give up. Yeah, that is right. We need to know again that persistence is difficult. It is not that easy. Jacob did not find it funny in the house and in the service of Laban. He did not. Elijah too. It wasn't easy, but he was persistent. Blind Bartimaeus, when they were shouting him down, he was persistent. He didn't listen to the voice of the people that were shouting him down, you know, and so many other examples. We can demonstrate persistence also. We can be in a project team trying to achieve a result. And maybe because, you know, when you come together in a team, you will see you will quarrel at first, you will have disagreement at first, you will have those that were not cooperating at first. But if you persist, you know, you will achieve results. We just need to trust God to help us. To be able to achieve our goals, to be able to demonstrate persistence, we need the help of God. It's not something that we can do by our own power. It's not easy. Because we are humans, we will get discouraged. We will hear so many voices around us. But we need the help of God. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. And without a relationship with God, it will be difficult. You know, it will be difficult. Because God did not mean for us to walk this walk, you know, by our own strength. We need his help. The world is full of so many challenges there. We need God to help us to continue to hold on and never to give up till the end. It pays to serve God. Let's be persistent in whatever we have committed to do. Let's not give up. If we are here and we don't have a relationship with Christ, 
I think for us to have a better life. I think for us to be able to achieve our goals. I think for us to be able to achieve success, we need to come to Christ. If you are with me and you need to give your life to Christ, can you close your eyes and let us pray together? Can we pray? Can you close your eyes? Put your hand on your chest and say after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins and come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I confess that you died for me and you rose again in order to save me. Take over my life from today and help me to live a new life in Christ Jesus from this time forth and forever by the help of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Congratulations as you say that prayer. And I want to encourage you to pay attention to build your new relationship with Christ Jesus by reading your Bible, by praying always, and building your spiritual muscles. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we will not give up. Our memory verse for today is going to be in the book of Psalm 100, verse 2. Do we have it? Precious Daniel, Psalm 100, verse 2. Can we read together? Are you ready? Yeah. Want to go? Psalm 100, verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. One more time. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. For the last time, serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. And as we go today, the Lord will go with us. His presence will be with us. Remember, let us not give up. Anytime we feel discouraged, let us seek the help of the Holy Spirit. A simple prayer and seeking help from the Holy Spirit will go a long way to help us. Any last word for our audience? Well, always be persistent. Even, so, even though people say that you can't do it, be persistent in everything you do. Do not let anyone tell you that you are not able to accomplish something. Just believe that God will help you and be persistent and you will accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll see you again next week. Have a beautiful week ahead. Bye. Bye.